Now, at the end of the day, when it comes to HID ballasts, they basically all do the same thing. They take a 12 volt input from your car and they produce a high voltage output to turn on an HID bulb. But that doesn't mean that they all work the exact same, perform the exact same, or have the same level of quality. At TRS, we carry a pretty wide range of ballasts, everything from really affordable, kind of low-end ballasts, the excellent Morimoto XB35 and XB55, Mitsubishi's 4th Gen D2S ballast, Denso's classic D2S Slim ballast, and the Matsushita or Panasonic Gen 4 ballast as well. Now, looking at comparison between ballasts, there's a variety of things that you can consider. The warm-up speed, their hot restrike capability, their weather resistance, their efficiency, how accurate are they are in terms of light output, and really depending on what you spend, you know, or depending on really whichever ballast you end up selecting, all those things can really vary quite a bit. So first things first, all of the original equipment ballasts were designed to be mounted underneath or within an original equipment headlight assembly. So for that reason, they don't really have much resistance against moisture intrusion on their own. Now, we can get around that by potting the ballast, which is also something that we offer and helps to extend the warranty and basically makes them bomb-proof against moisture, but they don't come that way out of the box. So you have to be a little bit aware of where you're mounting them so they don't get wet. More aftermarket ballasts, um, you know, keep that in mind because they know that, you know, you might be putting them in a place where they might get wet. The XB35 and the XB55 ballast, for example, is 100% potted and waterproof right out of the box. Most aftermarket ballasts, uh, you know, generic ones, kind of hit or miss. I mean, sometimes the case is waterproof, but there's no potting inside. So it's not really the most reliable setup. Second thing to talk about is serviceability. You know, I mean, a ballast is a high voltage device. Any electronics put in a harsh environment like under the hood are subject to failure. So, you know, the first thing about that is, you know, a ballast that's reliable. Basically, everything that's over here is going to be reliable. These ballasts we rarely ever have to replace for anything outside of moisture damage. They're designed for original equipment manufacturers to design for 2,000 hours, and unless something major happens to them, they're pretty much going to last. The XB35 and the XB55 ballasts, even though they're aftermarket, are super reliable. Um, we've been selling them for uh, about six months now, since November, and in that time, uh, they've uh, settled at about a failure rate of about 0.06, which is super low for an aftermarket ballast. And that's out of probably 50,000 ballasts already sold. Aftermarket ballasts, they come with zero warranty. We don't trust them. You pay for what you get. Now, in ballasts, there's two main components. There's an igniter, and then there's the ballast computer. The ballast computer is what's always inside of the big shell on the ballast, and the igniter is always outside. Here, here, here here. Now the Denso actually has the igniter inside, but any OEM ballast or well-designed aftermarket ballast with external igniters always design them to be replaceable because that's the part that produces the high voltage that's more subject to failure. So on the Matsushita it's replaceable, on the Mitsubishi it's replaceable, on the Morimoto ballast it's also replaceable. On the aftermarket ballast, not replaceable. The igniter goes bad, you're shit out of luck. Another nice thing about the Morimoto ballast, in fact, is that since their igniter is replaceable, there's two different versions of this that are optional with the ballast. One that's made for D2S bulbs, and there's also one that's made for H-series bulbs, which is right here. So this can has amp outputs, this one works with D2S, but they're all directly compatible with the ballast computer itself. So you can easily swap that out if you decide to change your setup. Now for people customizing headlights, the ability to choose a higher output ballast, such as a 50 or 55 watt ballast, is often desired. You're never going to be able to get that with an OEM ballast like the Matsushita, the Denso, or the Mitsubishi. You're going to have to look to an aftermarket ballast if you want that higher output. The Morimoto standard is XB35, that's 35 watt, just like the OEMs, but if you want more output, you're going to have to look for the XB55. Same goes with aftermarket ballasts. I mean, it's very common to see 55 watt aftermarket ballasts. Whether or not they're accurate in terms of that output, uh, it's kind of hit or miss. But, you know, at least you'll get maybe anywhere from 40 to 50 watts of output if you pick a high wattage, you know, cheap ballast at least. In talking about the igniters earlier, one of the most important things there is the amount of voltage that the igniter produces. In cold weather, 
the natural capability of that igniter will be decreased because of the cold temperature. So it's important to make sure that you're getting a ballast that has a strong enough igniter. And a good way to judge that is based on its hot restrike capability. And what that means is basically its, its ability to refire a already hot HID bulb after it's already been turned on repetitively uh, because it's quite hard for ballast to do that. So what we're going to do here is compare a you know, well-known OEM ballast like the Matsushita to something like the Morimoto in terms of their hot restrike capability and just flash them on and off pretty frequently um, just to kind of demonstrate the strength of the igniters on both of these ballasts.